This isn't the first time in history the South East has had to fight off an infectious disease. That's definitely a piece of the coffin and that, there are two bones there. Look, there's a vertebrae. In 2017, we brought you the story of Dead Man's Island, an outer bounds resting place for convicts who died of cholera on board the prison hulks moored off the coast of the Isle of Sheppey. And what we found would stay with us forever. This is a really strange sight. There can't be anywhere, I'd imagine, like this on Earth. After coming out to Dead Man's Island for the first time, I wanted to find out more about the people who were buried there, to see them as more than just body parts. So I started to try and find out their names. And there was one name that kept coming up in my research, Dr. Sidney Bernard. When slavery became illegal in Britain in the 19th century, the Royal Navy sent their state-of-the-art steam-powered ships on anti-slavery patrols on the west coast of Africa. But these new ships were a perfect home to disease-carrying mosquitoes. They got mosquitoes in the bilges of the ship where it was warm and also damp, uh, and they, they, they bred quite happily and started to bite and infect the, uh, the crew. And what were they infected with? Yellow fever. A naval ship named HMS Eclair stopped off at the island of Madeira in 1845. Its crew members were dying fast, including the ship's surgeon. They had yellow fever. A 27-year-old doctor named Sidney Bernard volunteered to board the ship for the journey back to England and help care for what remained of the crew. On the ship's return, it was turned away at the dockyard in Portsmouth and sent to Stangate Creek, an area behind Dead Man's Island that was used to quarantine ships. So looking off the coast here, the only thing there seems to be is, is birds. So why would you bring a ship full of diseased people to these waters? Because it's out of the way and it was very difficult for the crew to jump ship and get ashore and do, do a runner and possibly spread the disease to the population ashore. News of Dr Bernard's heroism hit the papers as he cared for what remained of the crew. But HMS Eclair had become a breeding ground for the infected mosquitoes and the doctor was soon to lose his life. Nick is amongst a handful of people who know the exact whereabouts of Dr Bernard's grave and has agreed to take me to the site. This looks like a grave you'd see in a churchyard, not on an island in the Thames estuary. Yes, Sam, and, and you can see the, um, the bar top here. There's the, one of the corner pieces coming along. There's another one. So the tide comes in every day and washes over, so any gravestone or tombstone that was there is it, covered in mud. The original grave slab is nearly a metre below the surface. He must have known the risks. I'd say he was very brave. Very brave indeed. The doctor is buried across the water from those on Dead Man's Island. No one can say for sure why he was buried alone and isolated and not returned to his family in Dublin. I know since the Dead Man's Island film, lots of people have come out to these islands to, to see it for themselves, even though they're not technically supposed to. I think now there's a story in seeing that there was someone a few hundred years ago helping Kent and the South East fight off disease, something we can really relate to now, it really hammers home the point that these people deserve to rest in peace. Sam Supple, BBC South East Today, Queenborough.